I have a riddle for you. I have a riddle, but I do not have the answer. I need your help in solving this mystery. Deep within the mire, east and across the bridge from Harper's Ferry, lies Tanagra Town. When we first lay eyes upon it, it appears to be impossible. A giant circular piece of rocky land floats in the sky, high above the treetops, towering over everything around it. It appears to be supported by some of those strange red snaking vines that we've seen devastate pre-war structures all throughout the mire. The vines have spared a few buildings. Coming from Harper's Ferry, the first building on the left is a tiny little shack with an open refrigerator inside. Here we find one ammo canister and a random recipe on the kitchen counter. There was at one time a second level, but it's been torn away. But then we hear a noise. Peeking outside, oh, it's a hulking mega sloth. Sorry, Isaac. One large, powerful enemy has a chance to spawn here at the base of Tanagra Town. Another time I came by, I found a level 75 glowing fog crawler. We find a few skeletons on the porch here and a cooking station nearby. Moving northeast, we find another shack. This must have been a workshop of some sort. We find lots of tools and scrap all laid out. Inside, we find an armor workbench. Moving southeast of here, we find a ruined bus stop. And on the top of the bus stop, we find the words Tanagra Bus Stop. But jumping up, we see a big space between Tanagra and Bus Stop almost as if a word is missing. And then we see it. Looking down on the ground, we find four letters that have apparently fallen from the bus stop. T-O-W-N, town. Though I suppose these could spell won't. So even before the war, this was known as Tanagra Town. It's not some post-war local name. Inside the bus stop, we find a skeleton lying out. But more interestingly, on the brick wall of the bus stop, we find some chalk graffiti. Darmok and Jalad. Beneath Jalad is a scribbly line, possibly representing Earth. And nearby, a flower representing what? Life, peace, friendship. This graffiti connects this location to the September 30th, 1991 episode of Star Trek The Next Generation called Darmok. In the episode, the USS Enterprise encounters an alien race called the Temerians, but they're having a hard time understanding each other. Even though the Universal Translator can translate the individual words that each person is using, the way the Temerians construct their language is confusing to the Federation. Jiri of Umbaya, Umbaya of Crossroads, at Lunga. Lunga, her sky gray. This frustrating conversation comes to a head when the captain of the Temerians says, Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Block their transport of the shields. Extend to maximum range. Not enough time. Despite the obvious protestations from his first officer, the captain has the Temerians teleport both Picard and himself to the surface of a nearby alien planet, Eladrell. For the rest of the episode, Captain Picard and the other members of the Enterprise try to figure out the Temerians' unique way of speaking. Picard around a campfire with the captain who kidnapped him. Timber. Does timber mean fire? Timber, his arms wide. Timber is a person. His arms wide because he's, he's holding them apart in, in generosity, in giving, in taking. Timber, his arms wide. Thank you. Thank you. Riker and Troy back on the Enterprise. 
This appears to be a proper noun. The name clearly carries a meaning for them. Computer, search for the term Darmok in all linguistic databases for this sector. A mytho-historical hunter on Chantill 3. Computer, search for the term Tanagra, all databases. Searching an island continent on Chantill 3. Stop. Chantill 3. Computer, cross-reference the last entry with the previous search index. Darmok is the name of a mytho-historical hunter on Chantill 3. After a while, they both discover that the Temerians communicate using allegory. In order to express an idea, they don't mention that idea. They instead reference a story that they all know, whether it's a fictional story from myth or a well-known moment from history. Counselor Troy describes it like this. It's as if I were to say to you, Juliet on her balcony, an image of romance. Exactly. It's how they communicate, and it's how they think. If we know how they think, shouldn't we be able to get something across in them? No, sir. The situation is analogous to understanding the grammar of a language, but none of the vocabulary. If I didn't know who Juliet was, or what she was doing on that balcony, the image alone wouldn't have any meaning. That's correct. For instance, we know that Darmok was a great hero, a hunter, and that Tanagra was an island, but that's it. Without the details, there's no understanding. Back on the planet, Captain Picard deduces this himself while talking with the Temerian captain. Temba, his arms wide. Darmok, G give me more about Darmok. Darmok on the ocean. Darmok, Darmok. The ocean. Darmok on the ocean. A metaphor for being alone, isolated. Tanagra on the ocean. Darmok at Tanagra. Tanagra on the ocean? An island. Temba, his arms wide. Jalad on the ocean. Jalad at Tanagra. Jalad at Tanagra. He went to the same island as Darmok. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. They're referring to a point in their own mythology where two strangers trapped alone on an island became friends during a common struggle. That's why the captain said Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. He was trying to find a solution to their communication problems. And he remembered from Temerian myth that two strangers, Darmok and Jalad, became friends when they spent time alone together on the island of Tanagra. That's why he kidnapped Captain Picard, and the two of them had to spend the night alone together on the planet of Eladrel, which in this context was standing in for the island of Tanagra. So, how does this relate to what we find here in Appalachia? Perhaps the developers are trying to tell us a riddle. The Temerians knew the story of Darmok and Jalad, which then became part of their language to describe the idea of two people becoming friends after struggling together on an island. The Temerians tried to reinvent that story with Captain Picard. What if Bethesda is trying to reinvent that story here at Tanagra Town? and the graffiti we find on the bus stop is their way of telling us the connection. And instead of telling the story of this town with hollow tapes and terminals and notes like they always do, they use the graffiti, tying it in with Darmok and Jalad to let us know that there's a deeper meaning here. We can't take everything at face value, that in some way, this very place is a metaphor. If that's true, then we need to keep our eyes open while exploring Tanagra Town to see if we can figure it out. For example, we know from Temerian mythology that Tanagra was an island. And what do we find in Fallout 76? Well, an island. Not an island in an ocean, but an island in a sea of air. The vines of the mire have pushed this small piece of land high up into the sky, creating a bit of an island. What other connections can we make? East of the bus stop, we find a few more structures. There's another workshop with a number of containers and a weapons workbench inside. Interestingly, we find a boat here, but there's no body of water nearby. Could this be another connection to Tanagra being an island? 
Backing out of the workshop, we can move northeast. Here we kill a few scorched. We find a truck parked here with some shipping containers and crates on top. Inside the shipping container, we find an interesting scene. There's a skeleton with a plastic pumpkin for a head, wearing fashionable sunglasses, and with a bouquet of flowers for hair. I really wanted to take a screenshot of this, but the Fallout 76 screenshot tool wouldn't work in here. The shipping container was just too cramped. It wouldn't let me pop out the camera. Also nearby, we find two bottles of cream, and it's a wonder this hasn't spoiled after all these years. Heading around to the other side, we see a few vehicles parked out back, and opening the door, we arrive in some sort of bunk room. We find three bunk beds, each of which is covered in skeletons. There are two skeletons playing chess, next to an alarm clock on the bottom of one of the bunks. There's a locker nearby with a bird cage. Strange to find a bird cage here. We usually find bird cages at mines, the whole canary in a coal mine thing. But as far as we know, there was no mine here at Tanagra Town. In another bed, we find two more skeletons in an embrace. And next to this, we find a locked door, but it requires a key. And just outside, we find a keypad. But even when we activate it, nothing happens. This is very strange, because with every other keypad that we find in Fallout 76, even if we don't have the key code, we can still access the keypad. We can still call it up and type in a bunch of random numbers, but not so with this one. Does that mean that there is no key code? And if so, what's the point of this? Why is the door locked? Why does it require a key that we can't get that doesn't exist? I tried many ways to find a way inside this building. Tanagra Town is one of the easternmost locations on the map. If we walk due east of Tanagra Town, we arrive at a fence and the edge of the world. We can't pass beyond this point. And there are few locations around us. There's an abandoned waste disposal dump just north of Tanagra Town, and inside we do find a key code, but it's for a different lock. That toxic waste dump is part of the primary plot of the game, which is when we go there to retrieve the code. Just south of Tanagra Town is a ransacked bunker, where we find a small bit of lore concerning the Free States, but no tunnel leading back to this barn. There's a small ruined house nearby, which is the spawn point for a fight between anglers and super mutants, but exploring every inch of this ruin, I didn't find a cave, a tunnel, or a key for that door. You saw me explore the crater, created by the great vines that pushed up the earth, but there was nothing down here. No lore, no hole, no cave, not even any loot. This means our answers have got to be at the top of Tanagra Town. To get there, we climb some red twisting vines on the western side of the town that form a ramp using a destroyed school bus. The school bus door is open, but the vines cover it, so we can't explore it. From here, we can leap atop a rock, which is connected to a shipping container, and then a flatbed truck with a ramp of steel and even more shipping containers. Using it, we continue to wind around Tanagra Town. We leap atop a red shipping container until we find a pipe right next to a bathtub sitting on some vines. From the bathtub, we can leap atop the pipe and crawl up the side to find the floor of a bathroom from a ruined house. The vines then suspend the floor and more pieces of flooring forming a ramp to another bus. This one makes more sense to find here. It's the kind we would have found at a bus stop. Inside the bus, we find a lunch pail, but that's it. Heading out the back, we can climb atop an overturned car to find a big mass of vines and roots that form a ramp up to a ruined staircase. Here we begin to see scrap metal, ductwork, and metal chimneys from houses forming a ramp that zigzags up the side of the rock. At the top, the path actually splits. We can turn right, which appears to go up, or we can turn left through some of these roots. If we go left, the path gets thinner and thinner, making it really tricky to get across, but if we're careful, we can sneak by to the very end, whereupon we find a crib with a sloth toy, a footlocker, and disturbingly some handcuffs inside. Turning around, we see a chair that's been tipped over, two wads of pre-war money 
duct taped to the underside of it. Above us is a big metal pipe with a bunch of those red strangler vines dangling out of it. This is a good point of reference while exploring this thing. It helps us from getting lost later. Now, if we continue southwest along this ledge, we eventually find some rocks that we can use to climb up, but this is the hard way to get up there, and we bypass a lot of interesting stuff by doing so. So, turning around, we can follow the rocky ledge, past the crib, and through the roots back to that fork in the road. We can continue by taking the northwestern path up and around the side of this big mound of earth. At the top, we find brain fungus on the wall, an overturned fridge with more brain fungus in it, and the entrance to a cave in the side of the rock. Creeping inside, we loot some brain fungus and glowing fungus until we get attacked by cave crickets. After killing the crickets, we can creep inside and we see that the path splits off and up to the south or down to the west. We'll start by going down, and at the bottom of this path, we find more cave crickets. Here we find some crystal and gold veins. And then, tangled up in some roots next to some glowing fungus, we see a metal face, just like the ones in the depths of Lucky Hole Mine, which I covered in a video that you can watch here. Just like the ones we found at Dunwich Borers over a hundred years later during the events of Fallout 4. As I mentioned in those videos, I don't think this could have been placed here by post-war or pre-war society. This beaten metal face, complete with seams and rivets, is buried in meters of earth and entangled in roots. As if it's ancient, it's been here for centuries. What could this mean? Then we remember our Easter egg. And we remember... Darmak and Jalad at Tanagra. Darmak and Jalad went to Tanagra where they were alone. They forged a friendship after enduring a common struggle. But what was this common struggle? The beast at Tanagra. The beast? There was a, a creature at Tanagra. Darmak and Jalad, the beast of Tanagra. <laughs> They struggled together against a common foe, the beast at Tanagra. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Darmok and Jalad on the ocean. They left together. Darmok and Jalad on the ocean. You hoped that something like this would happen, didn't you? You knew there was a dangerous creature on this planet, and you knew from the tale of Darmok that a danger shared might sometimes bring two people together. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. You and me here at El Adrel. Darmok and Jalad fought a creature together on Tanagra. That was the alien captain's ultimate plan. He thought that he and Picard could become fast friends by fighting some sort of energy creature on the planet of Eladrell. Back in West Virginia, we find our island, and in the depths of the island, we find this metal face. Could this metal face be our creature? Or could it be the symbol of our creature? Perhaps the true creature is the interloper or a representative of the interloper. To leave, we retrace our steps back up to that split. Taking the split up, we fight even more cave crickets, loot even more brain fungus and glowing fungus, until we find an opening leading outside. We find ourselves directly above that really narrow section of the path. There's that pipe with the red vines flowing out of it. From here, we could drop down to that point. Instead, we'll go back into the cave and retrace our steps all the way back down to that refrigerator filled with brain fungus. From here, we'll continue northwest along the path. This brings us to our 
first ruined building. Here we find a sniper rifle with some rad X. There's a bed in here, and in the back we find a stove with a random recipe on top, and we can open a door to the northeast, leading down to the broken deck. Things are really tricky here because the building is about to fall. We could fall right off. But if we turn west from the porch of this house, we can follow some rocks up a big dirt mound beneath some red vines and tree roots until we find a big mass of vines forming a ramp up towards a tire swing. Taking the vine up, we arrive at a ruined playground. There's a seesaw, a basketball on the ground. Continuing from here, we see rocks going up and a lower path going off to the northeast. We can use this path to drop back down to that ruined house below, but onto an upper portion that we previously couldn't access. In here, we find a skill level two locked safe. But from here, we now have to drop back down into the house and walk all the way back to that vine that brings us back to the playground. From here, we can take the rocks up to the east, which brings us to the top of Tanagra Town. Here at the top, we find a number of ruined buildings. If we look off to the north, we find the ruins of a school. On the ground, we find a chalkboard with a message, A, B, C, D, puppies. And then we've got two puppies with a flower. We immediately remember the chalk graffiti Darmok and Jalad at the bus station. It also was made with chalk and it had a similar flower. Could there be a connection? On the nearby desktop, we find Tales from the West Virginian Hills 1, The Mothman Cometh. By looting this magazine, we get the radio play, The Mothman Cometh, parts 1 and 2. We've listened to these radio plays in the past, they're really interesting, so we won't listen to them again here. But next to this, we find a piece of chalk, and through these holotapes, we are connected to the cult of the Mothman. And as we explored in my video on the interloper, which you can watch here, the cultists who worshipped the interloper at one time had been part of the cult of Mothman, or had some sort of pre-war connection to them. So we find a metal face deep within the earth beneath a school where we find holotapes connected to the Mothman. Is that mere coincidence? At least now we understand what the school bus was doing here. On a bookshelf nearby, we find a randomly generated plan, and in a box behind a furnace, we find two stealth boys. Disturbing to find stealth boys inside a school. There is another broken section to the school off to the southeast. Climbing that way, we find some radex lying out, some lockers with random scrap inside, a footlocker on the ground with ammunition. And if we turn south, squeeze between some rubble and a ruined doorway, and then pass west into the doorway, we find a ledge overlooking a long drop to the earth below, and a note, reason to live. Look at this place. I'm king of the gosh darn world up here. Who threw the magic beans under my childhood town? Guess a little radiation goes a long way around here. Well, maybe that and some government bullcrap. Not sure how you end up in a world like this without good old government bullcrap. You know, I came here to say my goodbyes and screw yous to the world, but now maybe I'll stay a little longer. I got a room with a view, and I can't wait to piss off this thing. Oh, okay. Now that you mention it, I suppose that would be really fun. So an old student of this school comes back long after the war to find his hometown completely transformed. I don't think this connects in any way to Darmok and Jalad or the Interloper. I think it's just a little side story of some guy that managed to find his way all the way up here. We'll have to keep an eye out for his remains, unless he took a tumble. Moving east-southeast of this location, we find another ruined building. It's tricky to get inside, but we can hop through a broken wall. It's really difficult to loot this place. Everything is sliding down to one end. At the bottom here, where most of the stuff has slid, we find an alarm clock, a bathtub, a footlocker with ammunition, and a first aid kit on a wall by the sink. If we go out the southern door, we find a really tight path. This brings us to that pipe, with the red vine snaking out of it, overlooking that narrow ledge that we walked to earlier. This path connects directly to the top opening of the cave. But since we've been this way, we'll turn back around to retrace our steps. Back inside the house, we can move north, squeeze through a doorway, and down. From here, we find the mailbox of this house, but it was empty in my game. Crawling up to the northwest, we find a table with ammunition and psycho on it, and another house. We can pass through a big hole in the wall. To enter this house, at the bottom, we find a tool case, but it's really ruined. There's a level above us, however, trying to find a way up there, 
We see a door frame that leads to a vine that we can climb to get back to the top of Tanagra Town. Here we find a stone we can walk on, leading to the main floor of this house. Here we find some scrap, a random recipe, some board games, unstoppables, and blast radius, and a little clown toy at the edge of a couch. We are at a drop leading down to the bottom floor we explored. There's a giddy up buttercup here, a platform across the way with a trifold American flag, and then a bowler hat on the ground here. After looting some brain fungus on a wall, we can head outside and take a scrap ramp up to this second floor. From here, we see the floor is mostly gone, but if we leap carefully, we can reach the second floor proper. If we make it, we find a bathtub filled with bootlegging equipment and a bunch of mountain honey and moonshine sitting around. And here we find our first and only corpse, the body of a settler by a bed. Perhaps this is the corpse of the person who wrote the note about peeing off the side of Tanagra Town. She tried to make a go of it here at her old hometown, even going as far as to bootleg liquor from the bathtub, only to be killed by the Scorched Plague. We find an assault rifle, and on the headboard, a bobblehead and a magazine. In my game, I found Unstoppables 4, trapped in the dimension of the Pterodactyls. At the foot of the bed is a footlocker, locked with a skill level one lock, and that's it for the house. From here, we can move to the very top of the mound, where we find a wooden crate surrounded by glowing fungus next to some housing ductwork covered in brain fungus. And that's it for Tanagra Town. At the beginning of this episode, I said that I have a riddle for you, but that I do not have the answer. I don't know where we get the key to the number pad inside the barn at the base of Tanagra Town. We can't even access the keypad. So even if we had the key, we wouldn't be able to use it to get inside. I've done some searching and I can't find anyone who has the answer. No one I've read about has found a key card to allow you inside and the strategy guide doesn't even mention it. The section on Tanagra Town is brief and it doesn't even mention the keypad. What was the metal face doing in the heart of Tanagra Town? Is it really connected to the interloper? Could this stone face somehow be responsible for the great vines of the mire pushing this portion of the earth up to form the floating island of Tanagra Town? I don't have the answer, but I'll give it a good shot. Now that we have all of the clues, here's what I've got. I have two possible interpretations. Both of them have the same answer to the questions, who is Darmok and who is Jalad? I think Darmok and Jalad are you and I. We are the strangers who come to this island to become friends while fighting towards a common goal. So what is this common goal? The common goal is to defeat the creature. So then, who is this creature? Possibility number one. The creature is the interloper. We find what may be the interloper being born in the first stages of emerging within the bowels of Lucky Hole Mine. And it just so happens that the physical form of this interloper is made of roots and vines. Roots and vines which we find uplifting the cave of Tanagra Town. The metal faces inside Lucky Hole Mine connect it here to Tanagra Town. Could it be that sometime in the future, maybe in one of Bethesda's free DLCs, we'll have to fight a boss? the interloper here at Tanagra Town. If so, this may explain the locked barn with the keypad. Perhaps at some time in the future we will come here, we'll get the key, gain access to whatever's inside that barn, which may be a tool or some weapon we can use to defeat the interloper who is waiting for us at that time in the heart of Tanagra Town. We strangers will come to Tanagra Town and become friends while we fight the interloper. Possibility number two is much less complex. The one solitary great creature we killed upon arriving at Tanagra Town is the creature from the Temerian myth, the great sloth or the fog crawler. Perhaps the reference is really as simple as that. However, I prefer my first explanation for two reasons. The fog crawler or the sloth being the creature removes the need for both Darmok and Jalad, both you and I, because I could kill it by myself. I didn't need anyone with me to destroy the creature and that defeats the purpose of the allegory. The purpose of the allegory is for us to become friends working together towards the common goal. But if I can do it by myself, I don't need you. The second reason I don't like that last explanation is because it doesn't explain the keypad and the locked warehouse. 
Without an explanation that gives us access to that warehouse sometime in the future, we've got this really frustrating barn with a locked door that I can't get inside, and I want to get inside to find out what's there, and I've explored all of Tanagra Town, and I've got no key. Why? And so I'm hoping that my first theory is correct, that someday we'll come back here together to defeat the interloper. But that's just my best guess, and that's why I need your help. I'm only one guy. I'd love to see what your brains together can come up with. You think I'm on the right track, or is there a bigger picture that I'm missing? Please, let me know in the comments below. I publish many new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still not getting YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with each new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. They come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, stickers, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. Thank you.